Guys, wait until I show you the fish. Tiny little white fly. 10 pounds, guys, right there. Look at that big rainbow. Big square tail. Game on. At Collins Lake. Congratulations, Falcon. That's a monstrous. Cal Kellogg here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please help me out. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and you'll always know when I'm here on YouTube talking about trout fishing. Today, we are talking about trout fishing tactics for the fall. Specifically, I am going to talk about top lining. I have gotten a bunch of questions about top lining recently, and uh, I'm going to answer all of those right now i don't have any fish footage for you today actually i have a ton of fish footage i've been traveling all over northern california i got a bunch of video content to put up but i haven't had time to edit it i'm getting ready for a guide trip tomorrow um around the first of november i'm going to start guiding on collins lake full time so i've been busy 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 anyway let's talk about top lining now what is top lining top lining is as simple as putting a lure on the end of your line and putting it out a set distance behind the boat to troll you know the water near the surface all right now this is the tackle i use a lot for top lying it's just one of my my downrigger rigs abu 5500 um line counter reel one of my Kel kellogg salmon and trout downrigger rods right there um i've got it rigged up just as I would if I were gonna fish off a downrigger. Main line, that is 10 pound trilene big game line, comes down, goes through a bead, troll and swivel, eight pound test fluorocarbon leader. And uh, in this case, I've brought it down to a cross lock snap and a death prism trigger spoon, okay? For me, top lining typically means I'm running a lure in the top five feet of the water column. But depth, be aware that depth is dictated by what you put on the end of your line. If I put this spoon, say, you know, 100 feet back, I got a little bug bugging me here. I guess that's why they call them bugs. Um, anyway, if I put this 100 feet behind the boat, say I'm moving at two and a half miles an hour, that spoon is only gonna be down a foot or two which is awesome. That's where that's where I like to spend a lot of time running baits in the in the fall, in the winter, and in the early spring. But let's say I was running this. Let me grab it here. Ow! That hook was sharp. <laughs> Let me be careful here. Good gravy. Um, let's say, let's say I was running this. Let's say I was running a three-inch maglip. Now, if I run that lure back a hundred feet on this rig it is gonna dive down to about 12 feet deep. So I'm gonna be fishing 12 feet deep. So what you put on the end of your line definitely dictates how deep you're gonna be fishing when quote unquote top lining. But uh, let me get rid of this thing before something bad happens. Like I hooked myself in the finger again. Owie, I drew blood a little bit. Um, but for me, I really like to think of top, top lining as keeping a lure in the top five feet of the water column, okay? And a lot of times that's my trailing line. We'll get into spreads in a second, but uh, that's kind of my basic top lining rig right there. No weights, no dodgers, no downrigger, no lead core. Now there is one situation when I do use a weight with one of my top lining rods. If you're running a spoon or a plug, it's gonna run under the surface, no problem everything's going to be great let me show you another rig here now if you've watched the channel a lot you know that i top line a great deal with flies and soft plastics and whenever i'm using either a fly or a soft plastic and i'm using that action disc right there you know this this entire rig this is a trigger minnow um this entire rig has virtually you know very little weight the heaviest component in there is the hook and the hook just doesn't weigh very much if i'm using the action disc paired with a soft plastic or a fly i like to put on a small usually about three eighths of an ounce a small trolling weight right between the trolling uh swivel and the leader i just put it in between those two right at that junction and this is enough weight just to ensure that that action disc or wiggle disc, you know, depending on what you want to call it, 
gets underneath the surface. And uh, truthfully, this little sinker paired with a trolling fly produces probably the majority of the really big trout I catch every year. Um, big trout last year came on this exact rig. I was top lining a number eight white junior trolling fly. Um, Paired with an action disc, I was in uh, Shallow Bay. I like to fish at uh, at Collins Lake. Young man on the boat got an 11 pound rainbow. That was the biggest fish of my guiding season. You know, this last spring, got it on a little tiny fly, running maybe two or three feet deep below the water surface. Now, so that that's the two ways I top line. Let's talk about setbacks when you're top lining. If I'm top lining out of my kayak, you know, 65 feet is a pretty decent distance. Biggest wild rainbow I ever got. Um, I talk about this fish from time to time. Lake Elmanor got a just a, between a seven and eight pound wild rainbow up there. Top line and a trolling fly. And all I had on my line was a single split shot just to get it just right beneath the chop. Okay, so that 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 was effective on the kayak. I was 65 feet back. In a power boat, a hundred feet back is a good place to start but you might experiment with putting your line back even further. And that gets us into my spreads for fall and on into the winter and early spring. I typically don't run my downriggers um, at all, or if at all, very much during the late fall, winter and early spring. The fish that I'm targeting, the active fish, the fish that are most likely to feed, they're up in the top of the water column, often they're close to shore, and uh, I can very nicely target those fish with lead core and actually outfish my downriggers when I'm fishing at the same depth. My, my, my lead core rigs, my hybrid lead core rigs will outfish the downrigger most of the time. Why? I don't know. They just do. And I get the same feedback from people. I got an email this morning from a guy who, who observed the same thing on his boat. Um, the hybrid lead core rig outfishing the downrigger when the fish are, you know, in the top 20 feet or so. So that's what I'm going to be running. Here's a spread that I'm going to be running on my guide boat up at Collins or wherever I happen to be guiding. I'm going to run four rods, okay? I'm going to run three hybrid, hybrid lead core rigs. Try to say that a few times. Um, over here on the starboard side, five feet deep. Middle of the transom, 10 feet deep. Port side, 15 feet deep and in one of the rod holders on the downrigger i'm going to be running a top line probably a fly an action disc teamed with a small weight like that and i am going to scope that back a full 200 maybe 225 feet back behind the boat um i'm not going to get a ton of strikes on that top line but very often the biggest fish of the day that bug is back the very the, the biggest fish of the day will come on that top line um i've got some theories sometimes i think the fish come into the main spread reject those baits and then see that that final offering silhouetted above their head and they jump on it regardless of the reason i'm speculating that trout don't tell me much when i get them on the deck usually hit them with a stick and that's kind of end of the story they don't tell me a lot but uh what I do know is very often that far setback, that long setback trailing line, when I'm on the guide boat, will pick up the biggest fish of the day. And a lot of those fish are really, really big, say fish over eight pounds. So that's kind of the story on top lining. That's my philosophy. I top line with spoons for sure. I do a lot of top lining with flies and sometimes the soft plastics, the trout tricks, the trigger minnows, the stuff like that. So I hope that clears up any questions you had. Um, that's the kind of spread I'm going to be running. Hybrid lead core and top lines. It's super fun fishing. Um, I am going to be integrating some dodgers and stuff. Don't typically use a dodger on the top line, but I will run dodgers from time to time on the lead core. Dodger philosophy, start out with a small dodger, increase in size as you think you need to. Um, enough said about that. If you're looking for gear, if you want a hybrid lead core rig, spoons, trolling flies, and more, you know where to go. Get on over to fhsfishing.com.